Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Human Colony Saturday webinar. Today is February 18th, 2017, and we have Roxanne Swainhard, who has joined us again to channel. Hey, Roxy. Hi. It's so good to have you back with us. Thank you for uh, joining. It's going to be really exciting. So um, I just wanted to welcome everybody, and I'll just quickly read off who we have in the room with us right now. We have uh, Ade, Angie, Bianca, Brian, Christine, David Allen, Gabriel, Pete, Roxy, Sam, Sean, Stephanie, Sheena, and myself, Bree. And um, I quickly want to go through some announcements and then we can get rolling. Um, we got some exciting stuff right now. If you go to humancolony.org, you can always check out our events. And today at 5 p.m. Eastern time, Sean Swanson and Jim Charles are going to be channeling together, um, hosted by Max. So that is going to be really exciting. So please check that out. You can find the links for participation um, in the humancolony.org slash jump page so you can always check out there and uh, check us out on Facebook we have a private and a public Facebook group we have a Facebook page we have um, a Skype group and of course the Google Hangouts that people chat in so let us know if you want to be involved in anything we love uh, having new members around so um, with that said I don't think just checking the calendar here um, those are the only events right now as of as of right now we are doing book uh, transcribing so if you would like to get involved in transcribing some of the channelings so that we can put it into a book please let us know you can email max at humancolony.org for that also um, if you would like to translate anything into other languages please it would be greatly appreciated and lastly we are looking for more moderators um, to do this type of work that I'm doing right now to make sure that these webinars that are provided for free are able to continue going on so if you would like to help moderate please let us know we will teach you um, you can email max at humancolony.org to get involved in that as well. And finally, if you'd like to donate, you can go to humancolony.org slash donate. So I think that about settles it for the news and announcements. Um, Roxy, please let us know what you got going on, girl, because I know you're doing classes now and Q&A and a whole bunch of cool stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, what, what do I do? I have uh, classes four days a week, twice a day. Um, they're, they're, well, it was like a channeling class, but then all the channelers, you know, like Bianca was in the class and a few others are like, okay, we know how to channel now, so let's talk about Ascension stuff. So that's what we do. So the channeling class has kind of went away, and now that it's like uh, four days worth of Sylvester and whoever he chooses to bring in, which is really awesome. And then um, um, I think that's about it. I got a couple other things working, but I, you know, I don't want to bring those to the table because they're just too freaking badass to talk about first. I just want to wait until it plays out. And I was like, okay, good. You know, when I know it's there, solid, I was like, okay, then I'll talk about it. But until then, um, yeah, and we do the Q&As from Odyssey of Ascension. Uh, that's my YouTube channel. You can go there, ask a question. I have a Q&A coming up at the end of the month. Um, I think it's actually, I was going to do it. It's going to be the actually March 1st because the end of the month ends on a February 28th on Tuesday. So I'm going to do it on March 1st. And you can send your questions and we'll read them live on the air or during the taping. And uh, then we'll answer your questions. And that's about it, really. Just rocking and rolling and love my reality, shed my realities my limitations motherfucking the universe when I find something about myself I don't like and I just rip myself apart and put myself back together and I was like all right let's drive on it's wonderful it's wonderful to be a human truly <laughs> it really is man we are so lucky so um we just got a whole bunch of cool stuff going on so thank you Roxy you can definitely check out Roxy's website the links are mm -hmm. in the description below um she does private sessions and mm -hmm whole bunch of cool stuff so get a hold of her and check out her YouTube she has amazing insight that she has brought through um, so thank you very much Roxy I just wanted to um, ask if anyone would like to provide any quick blessings before we get started just a few um, otherwise we can definitely get rolling here um, I know that people on YouTube were kind of just chatting a little bit about 
the topic of ascension in general, which you had um, briefly mentioned there. So it's going to be interesting to today to see what happens, but it always is, right? So uh, <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> always, always, it's like, what's going to happen next? <laughs> right. So wonderful. All right. Well, um, I think we can probably get started. I will just quickly um, say, Thank you, Roxy. Wonderful. And please go right ahead. All right, let's rock and roll, guys. Buckle in. Here we go. And greetings to the collective once again, that of humanity. Well, Sophia is here. In the ideology of ascension in and of itself, let us discuss this point of view. Firstly, let us send in some foundations for all you to behold if you choose, matters not to us truly. It is an offering, and remember that. We are not your authority, nor will we ever ask to be your authority. And what we will do is shove your authority back down your throat, and so you can become your own leader once again. So in the idea of ascension, truly, there has been many fascinations of ascension through the construct of humanity waking up in and of itself. See, if you're a covenant God, all you know is what you see. And then you can reflect upon your memory to see what you know. And then you can formulate ideas out of that. And those lead to unknowns of, land, let's say, allowance. Hmm. And then hence evolution takes place on its own without any help from humanity. It's a natural built-in algorithm to all of creation. We are always more than what we are now, and now, and now. Simple. So in the idea of ascension for the human species, there's been, let's say, many diplomacies, hmm? ideologies, ideas of rights and wrongs about what ascension is, points of view, individual singularities thrusting forward upon the ears of other humans what their truth is commanding it from a standpoint of separation. And there it is. Separation. Identity. Hmm? Ascension is becoming whole. You guys are already gods. Let us explain something. We're going to bring in a guest speaker for this explaining of something. An idea maybe you haven't beheld yet. Stand by. Greetings, all. My name is Sylvester. All right. Let's imagine if you're God, okay? Let's all pretend here. Take down your shit shells of dependencies, identities, purposes, healers, everything you think you are. Stop. And go right to the one thing that you know you are, but you haven't quite experienced from a standpoint of I am. God. Not a God, the God. You're a point of view of the whole. I know it's a little fathomable for you to say, if I'm not this God or that God, there's no God above or below. There's how many of us? Anyone? One. 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 It's one of us. And we're all points of view of the one. Now, if you are God and you forget your God, where do you go? Your God, you forget your God, where do you go? Back to God. You don't go to third density, ascending, fourth density, fifth density. Those are constructs that wake you up. Those were pinnacle points. Those were the introductions of gods thousands upon thousands of timelines ago. How do you know your God unless you, unless you, unless you give yourself an idea of what a God is. So, so now that through the thousands of timelines you're experiencing, and the menial timelines you think that this earth history is a couple thousand, 15,000 years old, you now know you're a God so you can have a belief system to embrace your Godship once again. That's the same thing with ascension, guys. 
It's the same thing with densities and stuff like that. Those are other incarnations. They're not human. Humans are gods that forgot their gods. They're not gods pushing themselves into a reality called Pleiadians to evolve a species called Pleiadians through the experience of a connected, that's the key word, hello, connected God knowing what they are, part of the whole. Like the Essasani, their children were like, really? Humans don't know they're connected to the whole? Holy shit. That kind of idea. You are disconnected to reconnect. As David says down there, remember. You're a member of the whole, and now you're remembering yourself. You're putting back yourself into the whole. You don't go to a fourth density being of a human. That's a choice. First thing you do is remember your God. Unlimited. You guys picking up what I'm laying down here? Ascension in the constructs of humanity is you're going to fourth density, fifth density, love light, and all these constructs you figured out from everyone interpreting a reality, putting it out there as their joy, and letting other people, and it's worked perfectly. And those other people choose it and modify it, and you have one chakra and eight chakras and 12 chakras and different colors and different meanings, and everyone is working their magic to themselves and finding their truth. Yes, but the key here is, is you're the truth of your world, not me. You, people, people like, like the one girl that emailed Roxy, she wants to know if there's any messages for her. Really? It's Nia 2003. Nia, darling, you're the messenger. You're God. I'm not your God. I'm not above you. I'm what you are. I represent what you are. I am a potential of choice, a freeing idea. So ascension to us, darling, is being reconnected back to the whole. Now, let's play another game here. Everyone imagine this, okay? You're zimming along in creation. For all of your nows knowns, all of them, every now, every now, you've always been connected to every stardust, every idea of every density and non-densities and universes and non-universes and everything that you can imagine in the opposite because you work in the idea of polarity, everything within existence you are connected to. You were never disconnected, okay? You guys got it? Not from a human construct of how you're communicating. Don't put your fathomable thinking brain into it because then you're working from a library of limitation called your past. Leave that out of the picture. Intuition, trust in you in the now. So you got that you are always connected and then one day you chose to be separated. You created a bubble. Actually, here's what you did. You have been looking at creation, which is you, which you've never had a view of disconnected. So it's what? Hmm? Unconditional love. Right? Of course. Because that's all humanity is. That's all of creation is. All of you, everything, everywhere, for all the nows are unconditional love. Unconditional. Any negative entities out there? Huh? Anyone fucking anyone over in the universe? Nope. It's only humanity that says that because you guys are gods and you get to experience that. So you choose every freaking vibrational reality to be what it is because you have looked back on yourself as a separated point of view. And now you took your eyes, you reversed them, and you're looking literally back at you and going, I don't know who you are. I'm separated. And you're looking at this picture called your mirror, called your outside reality as separate from you. Not your fault, your choice. That's called amnesia. So you separated yourself in this beautiful little bubble and you start to covet. Again, you covet. You didn't have it. It's like being ignorant. People get the two things, ignorant and stupid. Okay? You can be ignorant and not stupid. Ignorant is I don't know until you see. But of course, no one is stupid. Everyone has a point of view. And someone calls you stupid, they're just measuring you from their egoic dick measuring standpoint to be a feel them better because they don't know how to love themselves. All right. So you're in an idea of a world that you're trying to reconnect to the feeling of being connected, being what you've always been, knowing everything, everybody, in all the nows forever never being disconnected for anything, nothing. Then you did. 
So you have a feeling of separation, and here's what it is, the experience. And I'm talking from me, from direct experience, and all the other humans that I know that I'm talking on outside, let's say outside of fractalized awareness, that we're scared shitless when we figure this out. When we come here, we're so scared. I mean, I mean, guys, it's like falling and you have no vibration of reflection. You guys must understand you are having a frequency reflection to experience your awareness. You have input to know you're alive. Your existence, which never stops because you can never not exist, but you think that okay and we'll get to that <clears throat> but here's what here it is so when you're separated you're seeking the reconnection feeling you want to feel connected again to who to you everything all that is all of it so you've covet what feels good because you want to avoid your separate feeling so you put masks on identities, ways of feeling, taking the biggest pharmacy in all of creation right here in your mind, your hypothermic gland, and doing that wonderful drug-filled sensation that shoots through your body of all the chemicals and gives you that bliss of that momentary lapse of reason called belonging. I matter. I'm worth it. I feel good. Somebody loves me. Somebody cares. You don't bleed to be alive anymore because you got that drug, that addiction, that self that says, I'm alive. And you find it over and over and over and over and over. You have countries, flags, football teams, divisions, hmm? ways of separating yourself because you belong to this. And that's a challenge. And that is not what I think it is. But you belong to everything, guys. But your mind says you can't fathom to be connected to all that is, literally. And you know all that is. When? In the now. Not in time. Not in brain capacity. Not in smarts. By the releasing of the identities themselves. You grew up looking for admiration. You're seeking people's love. Parents. Hmm? Friends. You want to go out and be noticed. Otherwise, we wouldn't have so many fucking selfies, guys. You want to be alive. You want to be noticed. You want to be out there. You want to be connected, back connected. This is evolution. This is ascension. It's not the construct of where we're going and the splitting earths and the 3D, 4Ds. Those are distractions because those are choices. They're not must. They never will be must because you're not coming from an evolution standpoint that where you already doesn't know, don't know, how perfect you already know the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and eighth density in this Octavia solar system you're working within and the evolutionary Akashica universe you're in. You know it like you know the back of your hand, like you know you're a human, like you know you are alive. That's how much you already know it. What are you going to go back to it for? You're not. You're going on. You're moving on to a connected feeling. The game is to separate to remember your God. You had two gods that created an idea of an existence points of time. They had a reflection idea. That's when you guys gave yourself your soul memory complex. And then all of a sudden you had a realization of a reflection moment between two entities from two points of view sharing the same moment. You discovered first time. That's when we created time, how exciting we are. And then we also saw a repetition, a likeness to it. So you had gods that had the ability to be a repeater, but always from a different point of view. And then we found the algorithm, these two entities found their algorithm of something called a point of view never experienced. They figured it out. They go, what happens if we're not God? And one said, what do you mean? Exist. We can't unexist. No, 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 no. Just give us the illusion of not being God. And hence the game. Those two original entities were Joseph and Mary. That's it. They're game players. We came here to know we're gods. We didn't come here to keep evolving. We're already evolved, guys. 
you're coming from the standpoint of the whole. You're not coming from a standpoint of a fractal being has to learn everything over again, taking baby steps. No. You are whole, separated, back to whole. It's the only place you have to go. Unless you want to play the games of distractions, which you're good at. All of you are masters of limitations. You've been real good at doing this. Now it's a choice. But it's hard. It sucks. It's painful to let go of identity because you're so used to it. It makes you feel part of the whole again. But it's truly separated. Accept everything in your world. Everything. Don't have one ounce of disrespect, but you can't. You, how about having no respect? Then you are unable to have disrespect. You don't need to respect anything in your universe. Respect is an idea of like trust. I trust you. Well, how the fuck do you know what my conduit or my box of trust is? And you have to stay within that box. I'm not going to give you that kind of burden. What kind of a slave or a master am I then to put a burden on you of a box called trust that I perceive you should fit in? Then I'm a freaking a slave owner again stop don't try that be nothing accept all that is now in the idea of the reflection of the mirror people get a little confused about oh this must be me i created that no you didn't create that the higher self created already everything you're catching up in time get over it what you manifest is the way to view the reality that's already been created by your higher self already so let me ask you a question who should you trust then you the whole the whole of you because the fractal is going back to the whole the whole has created all probable realities you're there to interpret them through the individual identities you have chosen to see your identities in separation and accept them swallow that pill it's a big nasty pill when you know it's you and your pride trying to fight to have something of value in your life because they took away your worthiness. They wiped it off the planet. They said you were just a big piece of crap and you had to fight your way back into heaven. Fuck that. So anyways, you're disconnected. You feel that separation and you do it. You, you, you just felt this uh this angst to feel belonging again and you want to belong so bad so you come up with these different ideologies and these different ways of belonging and those distractions are what's keeping you out of ascension ascension is not moving on to a higher plane and all that moving on to being whole again whole holy okay we found this game to disconnect, to reconnect. You guys come back so many times. There's people in lines now. Oh, yeah, they want to come and play the game now, now that the game's a hell of a lot easier. But there was no light. The only way humans woke up is with each other's love, period. And that love was brutal, painful, as we've said. It's painful to swallow the pride that you are playing an identification of separation. That I need admiration to live and I want this person to love me the way I say because it's my world and I don't know how to fucking love myself is the key here, kids. You got to fall in love with you, kids. Accept every reality. Fall in love with you and choose your heart. But a mirror, don't say, oh, that person's an asshole. I must be an asshole. No, you're not an asshole. That's a God being a God because they're figuring out themselves. And if you provide them with a vibration of neglect, separation, then you enhance the separation. You feed the hungry lion. But if you allow them to be what it is, what are you fearing? They're going to attack you? You think there's actual attack, victimization in this reality still? Are you still fucking that pooch? Let it go. Because you guys are freeing yourself from all the constructs. How do you evolve unless you take a chance on evolution? Hmm? How many groups of people can you belong to over and over again? Has your life been the same in the last five years? Is it the same vibration? Not the details. Don't get confused with details. How do you feel about yourself? If you're free and you're not scared, that's it. But if you're wondering, preventing, Praying, having security, huh? Preventing futures, protecting yourself from what? Nothing. 
except what you, the God, gets to choose to protect yourself from because you're God. See, you're God because you're God. Your God life that you've lived is because you're God. Your future will be the same that you choose because you're God. So the gift here is to see that you guys are reconnecting back to the whole. You're going home. That's it. Don't make it any more glamorous. Don't hope that all these aliens and all this stuff out there is going to be there with the big shiny thing going, raw team. They're just gods like you. Take all the polarity and measurement and all that out. Let go and start being the isness of the moment. The kingdom of heaven lies with them was not a joke. The truth in the eye of the beholder is not a joke. That's all truths are truth now. That's the same thing. Take a truth and know it. When it's no longer your truth, don't worry about how it's going to be reflected back by your compadres and people that you find in the spiritual world that are being a definition of separation because now they've discovered spirituality and they say, well, that's the asleep world. If they're asleep, then just make them comfortable. But don't call them asleep because then you feed them. You feed them the separation and then there's no way they can wake up because you won't be the unconditional garden of the gods. Invite them into your vibrational world and let them play. Because you are arrogant. You're separated. That's all. Be unseparated. Allow everything. Watch how divine your universe will show you the beautiful that flows in. Remember, guys, okay, if you're believing this, not my job to make you. I don't give a shit either way because I already know what you are. If you are unconditional love and you are flowing unconditional love and you built a mirror around you to reflect back, what I put out is what I get back. Hmm? Is unconditional love is the point. It's not the karma bullshit and the construction of distractions and measurement that is what you put out is what I get back. No, it's I put out eternal love. I receive eternal love. Then guess what I get to do? I get to do this. I get to put up filters. Hmm. Here's a filter called separation. Maybe it's called admiration or anxiety, or maybe it's fear constituting the idea of safety and security, or maybe it's A, B, or C, or D. Those are my filters of belief systems that I picked up through my coveting God, not my fault. I have amnesia. My parents told me this, and that was the truth, and they told me this, and I say that truth, and they have to fight with my parents because this one sounds better, but who are you to not love me for what I want to fucking choose? Because they're separated, get it? You can never win. You can't win the fight because there's no fight to win. There's no better than. Then you're fucked. What you need to do is accept. Walk away. The meek shall inherit the earth. Fuck, guys. Stop trying to ascend and just ascend by letting go of all the things you think you need to do in anything outside of the now. And the now is no need because all nows are perfection. What, you think your higher self is here to teach you a lesson on what you need to go and search for in the now? No. How is the higher self going to do that to you? The higher self's not here to fuck you over. Your whole self is you. You. And you're remembering you. So you're going, I'm not going to hurt myself. Of course not. I'm not going to screw myself over. Of course not. I'm going to have everything I need in the now. But the constructs of identification say, oh, no, you don't have to live in this apartment. You have to have a car. You have to do this. You have to have this much money in the bank. You got to make sure your bills are paid because then you're going to have good credit. If you don't have that, you don't have a lot. Then you're playing the game of 3D until you push up daisies and you're going to come back again because you really want to know what it's like to wake up and know that you're God before you take the exit of death. How cool is that? You guys are there. You guys have an opportunity to know that you're God without the ideology of the decorations that says this is God. You guys have a built-in compass, a discernment needle that says I am God. And it tells you a truth about yourself. So either you choose it or you choose the illusion. If you have the balls to choose yourself over the illusion, you will find a peace that's unshakable, unfathomable, so freaking freeing, you won't even believe you need two of you to hold yourself. 
because you feel so good. You think it's about manifestations of material shit? That's that's what gods are here to do, to see how much stuff they can manifest. Hmm? Money. What? Healings. Becoming another identity. No. You're here to free yourself from the prison you've created. You. Because you're God. Because you chose that game. The most epic game. The mastery class of all master classes. And only masters come here. Everyone thinks they want to be a rainbow. Identification. Rainbow star seed. Identification. I need to feel special, so I got to be something else. You're just a freaking God being a human. And you've been here so many freaking times because the masters do not leave the game because the opportunity to know that you're God before you do it and you're, let's say, you're dying, waking up in your slumber going, holy shit, I am God. That's awesome. Oh, my God, that's awesome. That's how good it feels. Holy crap. Wow, and you want to do it here. You want to do it here on earth to know that. And guess what happens? Whatever you choose, wherever you want to go, as a human, take your body with you, go to any density, in and out of Akashika universe, in the different densities and dimensions and ideas that you can't even comprehend, living as color, vibrational invisibility, things that you just can't even imagine you get to do because you're not limited. Free. And peace is what you seek. You don't want to be scared anymore. You don't want to be afraid, separated. That feeling of, oh my God, I need something to make myself feel good. You connect, 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 connect in any way you can. You'll fight for it. You'll lie for it. You'll seek it. You'll hope a person falls in love with you. You'll claim that they're a soulmate. They're the one. You'll fight your identity to make them fit, and your life is one big struggle. Where are you fucking really good at it? Why keep doing it? What do you think that Jane meant on vulnerability? Stop. Just let go. What's going to happen? You're going to go hungry? No. What's going to happen if you say, God, I really hate my freaking job? What are you going to do? What's going to happen if you quit? Hmm? Whatever your known fears, not unknown fears, because fears don't exist in the unknown. Only one thing in the unknown, unconditional love. <coughs> All fears are based on the known. What's going to happen in the future? Huh? Whatever you imagine. You think you're actually going to manifest that? No. What you do is manifest the preventing of that shit case scenario. That's what you do. And that's why your life is a struggle. And then you go, thank God I worked at it and I prevented myself from falling into a big oblivion hole. No. You don't get that. You get no more filters running against the unconditional love that's flowing through you. So guess what you get? Miracles. But you won't let yourself see them because you think you have to. You think you're smart enough to create your miracles. Roxy doesn't think that. She did. She thought she can handle this shit. Of course she did. She came from the car business, you know, controlling $10 million inventories, right? She thought she was smart enough to, fuck, yeah, I can channel. I can do this. This is awesome, you know, and she started feeling it. And then she realized how fucking stupid she was. <laughs> She's like, I can't figure this fucking game out. I'm looking at creation using what I think is the past as the source to find, change my future. Stop. <laughs> and then she gave in. To the self, and the self start giving her everything she needed. Knowledge, wisdom, connection to Sly, me, Osiphius, hmm? Becker, the future of humans, Mira, the collective of the future, awesome, huh? Aragon, a wonderful elf, hmm? Leviticus, a magician, a wizard, truly. All the connections, and you know what? It's right here, and she accepted it as a truth. Because it felt right. And guess what? She gets that reality now. Because there's no filters. She's reconnecting to her self and all the under individuals that make up Roxanne. 
And Roxanne is the whole, the one, the only God. And now from your point of view, say it to yourself. I am the whole, the one, the only God. And everyone around me is my point of view from the individuals that I am. That's it. No more separation. No more better. No more worse. No more this. No more that. No more up. No more down. Forget it. Don't worry about it. You can still live as a human. Of course. Play the human game. But don't play the separation game in humanity. Start to have fun. Stop trying to become. Because becoming is coming to be. Be. And then you will become. Be. Be. Human beings. Be. It's fucking epic what you guys have done. See, this conversation is allowable because of this moment. All of the gods present here in YouTube land, watching everywhere, have allowed this experience in their acceptable framework, as Seth has said, that you've opened up your idea filters to allow this. And guess what you get to do? You get to choose. <laughs> you get to choose whatever you feel is your truth. Here we go with that discernment again, that needle, that needle that points north and says, ah, oh, that's the truth. And eh, nope, that's bullshit. Huh? Is it true bullshit or is it identification? Is it friction? Are you mad? Are you angry? Are you upset? Did you find something? Good. Upset yourself because what is it good to be set? No gods are set. We're never set. We are the constant that changes. It's the last law of the universe. We keep going and having fun because we are that. Creation, unconditional love, bliss, unmeasurable, truly. Oh, and Roxy just remembered an idea from Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. See, Sharon here in the class gave a Roxy a message the other day. It was just perfect timing because she was finding some truths about herself, some ideologies of limitations. She ripped herself up and really was angry because she was still seeking someone else's approval and that really pissed her off. She had to swallow that, eat that, accept that identity self and love it and bring it in and say, yes, I am that. And then it changed. And then it was just like right now when I was drinking the water and Roxy felt this. She felt this moment right here. See, this is common here, but it's so uncommon to so many others. Coffee's uncommon, blue jeans are uncommon, breezes are uncommon, and a nice cold drink of water is very uncommon in the universes. See, be the human, but don't try. Stop thinking. Stop trying to be something. Just be, and you shall see. Oh, it's extraordinary what you are. I've played the game. i got a fractal going on right now. Another self, being a God, having a great time. And see, that self is me, Sly. And I'm in that now from that point of view as a fractal. How cool is that? That's what you guys are doing. Don't worry about what else you are. Don't worry about the probable selves of limitation. Accept yourself in the moment as what you are that you covet in the mirror. Be that idea. Do not be afraid. Do not deflect. Do not... Penetrate the ideology of shoring up your separations anymore, and then you will find a freedom unbeknownst to you because there's no attention needed in unconditional love. There's no defenses needed to what's flowing back in the mirror consistently 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Every nanosecond of your now that you could imagine is love coming to you, and you're the filter of creation. You get to perceive how you want to see reality. You get to reject it. You get to accept it. You get to change it. You get to distort it. You get to colorize it. You are God creating what you know to be as the truth. Find your truth in the now and keep driving on. Let go of everything that you hope to gain. Let go of everything about being approved. Shed all of the probable cells of identities and you will find freedom again that is unshakable, is priceless, can never, ever, 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 ever be bought with any bullshit materialistic ideas in your plane of reference. And you'll just know. You'll know the freedom. So, that was a nice 45-minute jam. I loved it. Questions, anybody? That was a great jam. Thanks, Sly. 
<laughs> Thank you. We have had uh, a few questions coming in. You did briefly just touch on this with the fractal aspect, but somebody was asking for clarification on exactly how you would describe yourself as an entity. Okay. I describe me as an entity, as a vibrational, vi just, just vibrational. If you want to know space, it would be a particle of information. If you want to take out space and reference points of what you validate now, I'm a thought. And then I'm the thought, and what's behind the thought is my essence. That's called the will of the now. That's creation in and of itself. And then I give myself thought, reflection, understanding, evolution, experience, my eyes. So I'm not any individual entity. I'm not an entity being this or that. I'm the entity being the nothing and everything sequentialtaneously. That's an idea. That's it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, yeah, there were some questions about, there were some people commenting. Sure. Um, I would hope so. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, let me find it here. Um, just about Keenan. the idea of uh, moving into higher dimensions, and there were some worries expressed in terms of sure. us having to perhaps, if we choose, come back into the 3D. There's no, there's no, 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 no. All right, guys. Humans have built constructs of things you need to do in order to. You guys are already unconditional love. You were chosen by creation to exist for fuck's sakes. Okay? That choice can never go away. You exist forever. Any ounce of you, any ounce of you leaves, the entire system goes into non-existence. The entire creation becomes non-existence. So all existence is existence. So you've been chosen to exist. So stop. And there's no rules on existence. Otherwise, one ounce of limitation, we've already collapsed on ourselves because limitations have an ending. We are unlimited. We are the free will choice of all truths for truth in the now. The ultimate truth is you get to choose your truth. So yes, you can choose that you have to come back. But when you get there, that's a fucking choice. And it's not from an obligatory standpoint of, look what I did. Okay, I did this check, I did this check, I did this check, but I missed this, I missed this, and I missed this. I'm not here to learn shit. I know. I'm here to remember I'm God. That's it. The experience of being limited to discover portions of creation we never seen, never experienced, never known about until we chose a limited point of view to find more limitations, which is truly unlimited because this game can go forever. If you wanted to, because you're God. That's the idea. So you now have to come back here. There's no have tos. There's no one in charge. Because there's only one of us. Oh, dust. Pardon me. Anyways. I sense. love it. It sure does. Awesome. Someone else okay. has questions. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, David. David, are you able to unmute? Hello? Hello. Hi, David. What's up, baby? Um, I got uh, some stuff going on for the past couple of weeks. I've uh, been in a bit of deep sadness. I uh, perfect. I would like to maybe have more understanding so that I can continue on my path of healing and learn what I'm supposed to learn. Let me ask you a question. Are you okay um, right now? Are you having any danger in your life right now? Are you in peril? Oh, no, not in that sense. Perfect. So right now, no. you're perfect. But what you're feeling is identities. 
things that you don't have, dependencies that have left to bring your vibrational high into an emptiness. So you're seeking that addiction once again, and that addiction is to feel a certain way. So if you can't feel that way, you're getting closer to what you guys are trying to avoid, your separated self. Depression, suffering, scared, lonely, alone, all that shit. So you don't have your dependencies around you that are giving you the identity, the feedback. That's perfect because this hurts and it's real fucking uncomfortable to be a God with no dependencies, with no identifications. So what you're doing is shedding what you believe you were and now you're choosing to be now. Be uncomfortable for the few nows and I want you to realize, okay, well today's Saturday. Do you work? Do you have any work this Not weekend? Well. Just healing work, energy healing, but I'm heavy. okay. But you know, no obligations yeah. for the weekend, right? Okay, right. so just be for this weekend. Don't try to escape from your uncomfortable as long as you can. But I want you to be aware of one thing actually, two things. Pardon me. One, you're aware. People discount you're always fucking aware, which means you exist, which means you're always going to be aware. You never, ever, ever not being aware, and you got to start taking that as a really, really cool freaking thing to know in, in, in a wisdom point of view, and that just comes in repetitions of allowing your awareness to be known to the conscious self. Okay, and number two, that you're here and now. Is everything right? okay right now? Oh, yeah, but the future sucks. Yeah, I know. The future is shitty. I know, but is it okay? This is you talking to yourself. Is it okay right now? Okay, what's happening back? Let me look around. I got no peril. I got food. I got shelter. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay right now. 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 And you fucking let go of time because the only thing that's kicking your ass right now is time. You're looking for dependencies to make yourself feel good again. Where's my value in life? I'll tell you where it is. The kingdom of heaven lies within. They took away your worthiness. You're worthy of being existence. You were chosen to exist. And how the fuck can you not be worthy? Otherwise, you would not be aware. You, the individual that makes up you, that is aware, the sets of eyes, the feeling, the weight of a human, the breeze, the smells, the sounds, is aware you've been chosen to exist. That's your worthiness. That's what you go back to. That's what you start choosing. You don't choose the identities to fortify a moment of time to make yourself feel good. That's what humans do, right? Monday through Friday, life is shitty, live for the weekend. Monday through Friday, life is shitty, live for the weekend. Try to find those moments of now to give themselves that vibrational, let's say, addiction drug of belonging. And however they do it, however, there's a billion ways you guys do that connection back to the whole. So that's what you've been doing. Don't do that anymore. Because what's in the uncomfortable unknown is something you haven't remembered yet. It's called love. It's unconditional. It's a vibration that's going to come in and it's going to start to give you different vibrational feelings. See, if you're disconnected from all that is and the only thing you know is the connections of identity, it's going to be really uncomfortable to go back to being connected because you're letting go of the separated self. And the separated self is going, where are you going? I kept you alive. Stay with me. I'm safe. I'm secure. Yeah, life sucks sometimes, but we can get through it. Come on, team, charge. Fuck that. Let go of feeding that identity. Don't feed it. Let it go. And then all of a sudden, this uncomfortableness that you are feeling now, this loneliness, this sadness is going to start to shift in the now, in the now, in the now. And you'll start to get thoughts you can't believe you actually are thinking, remembering, connecting, feeling odd about things, really strange, having a little bit more of a divine nonchalance about life. You're starting to observe more and not participate because the participation is an ego, identity, to make yourself feel good. You don't do that as much anymore. You just start to relax a little bit. And then, boom, you start to feel, feel, feel. Not detail, 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 vibration, feeling, trust. That uncomfortable is you reconnecting. That's why everyone avoids. 
They don't like that because it feels like they're going to go right back to that self they felt when they first got here, separated. But it's actually the opposite. You're returning home and you're feeling very uncomfortable of what it is to be a god again, reconnecting, bringing all of your vibrational frequencies back online and starting to connect to the whole. But you were taught to fear the unknown, to poke and prod it and defend against it until it's safe with comfort and numbers. And as soon as an authoritative manner says, oh, it's safe, then you go, okay, now I can play with this unknown. No, you got to do that for yourself. You got to take a chance on yourself, baby. Why would we feel uncomfortable? Because your familiarity identity, this is Blue asking that. Why are not Blue Angie? Why would you feel uncomfortable, Angie? Because you're uncomfortable with who you are as a whole and you're very comfortable with who you are as an identity because that's the first thing you did as a valid idea of becoming human. I need to find an identity. Someone that makes me feel good. My mom says, this is the truth. My dad, I, don't, I love you. I love you. I love you. You're making me feel good. And then you keep seeking that all your life. All right, anyways, back to you, baby. You understand, David? Um, oh. Good. That's all you need to know. Here's what you now do. Stop thinking. Stop trying. B for the next day. B. Get out and do something that you want to do. Don't sit in a dirty diaper of funk theory trying to figure out this game. Get out there and live life. Go and become a human. Take an earth vacation for a day and start to experience the boundaries that you've seen yourself put on and go beyond those. Go be boundless for a day. Get reckless. Take a chance on yourself so you can experience an unknown portion of yourself instead of the identity trying to figure out this game from a standpoint of a spiritual point of view that kept me separated. But I didn't even see that I was a separated point of view until just now. And now choose. Make sense, baby? Kind of, sort of? Uh, yes. <laughs> Brian Sims, have some great sex. Yeah, Brian, you are a horn dog. Ah! You good, baby? David? Mm, kind of. Good. Whatever you think you're kind of, whatever that feeling is, I want you to observe that feeling of I'm not good. That's the addiction you want. You want to get back to that self that makes you feel good. What you need to remember is you will always feel good. You are the natural state of being of freaking eternal happiness, bliss, unconditional love. That's what you are all the time. You've been covering yourself up with the shits of identity. That's why you keep seeking. If you're not feeling good, you're recognizing an identity that's not being fed. So don't feed it, allow it, and you'll fall mo that much more in love with yourself. Be uncomfortable, kid. Trust it for a few nows. Trust yourself. Trust it. Don't fight it. Don't I'm... become something. Accept it. Accept it. Because you're still here now. I've been talking for at least 10 minutes. We're still here now together. Nothing's happened. Oh, but that's not enough time that's passed. Yes, it is. It's an eternity that just passed. Be right now with me. Be now. You're okay still. You're handsome. You got a cute hat. You got a Grizzly Adams look going on. Sexy. You got a lot. You're worthy. You're aware. You're God playing a game in a garden of gods that all forgot together, bouncing off each other to figure each other out, find our way home together as one. That's it. Relax. All the other shit that's running through your mind that you think is important is separation. Trust it. Make sense? Mm. Take a break Hopefully for it. Will. Uh, it will. Yeah. Don't worry about help. You got this. You're a god. See, so just I always just... remember this. Remember this. You wrote this conversation. Hello? You did. You had to have, because it's your world. You create everything in your world. You wrote this conversation for you. I just, I, I went through a, quite a long 
few years of, of, of struggle um, from something that was from an attachment that was causing fear and five areas of the yeah. brain and it caused slight damage that had to have advanced surgery. Okay, but how, but how are you now? I come out of it and I, Baby, I'm still now, sad. don't be sad because you're still now. I made this connection and then it just got shut down just like that with no it communication. Didn't shut down. It didn't get shut down. It's your perception that it got shut down because you're unworthy and being connected. That's all. You're just challenging yourself in more limited points of view. Are you okay right now? Then yes, yes. Then leave that shit what happened to you in the past in the past. Don't bring that big fucking anchor and plop it into your now because that's you dragging the nows into the nows. Nothing comes unless you choose it to come. Nothing, 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 nothing until you say, come on, pain, come with me because you're God. You get it? Because you're God. So you get that because you choose it. That's your trust saying, I want that and you get it. Why? Because you're God. No one's doing it to you. Don't fucking play that victim trump card. Uh -uh. It's you choosing. But you don't know your choices of separation until you get to a new point of being really fucking uncomfortable and have to see your identity and say, you're right. I am that. I accept it. God, this fucking hurts. Shit. But I'm still here. I'm still now. I'm unworthy. People will not like me. I'm going to be more disconnected. God, it hurts. That's what you need to feel. So you know that you've never been disconnected. You don't need to earn your way back into Godship. Because without you, I am not. How can you be any worse than me? You can't be. And I know another thing. Ain't no one better than me either. I'm all that is. So are you, darling. This is the meat and potatoes. This is awakening in the idea of ascension. This is struggling with the identities of separation. This is ascension. Not the fucking games of distractions. Getting down and ripping yourself open and finding everything that keeps you separated from the everlasting flow of the love. Everything that flows into you. Everything that flows into you, David, is love, is unconditional love. And you're putting up the filter saying, no, I don't deserve that. No. I can't have that awesomeness in my life. Or that's bad. So you need to get out of my life. And you defend and you divide against it. That's what you do. Because you didn't know. Because all you know is what you see. And now you guys know from a whole new point of view that I can choose my interpretation of everything in my reality to make myself feel like shit. To make myself feel wonderful. Or I can let go of all of the idea of the identities and I can just allow everything into my life to flow in and accept it and I will find an isness that's unbeknownst. But I can't give it to you. It has to be chosen. You have to choose your own love now because you're going back to the pity party. What happened to you? It's disconnected. Bullshit. That's you trying to look for an addiction self so I can make you feel better. I'm not going to feed you in the identity. You don't need to be fed. You're God, whole, perfect love. You're just saying you're not. You're just commanding a vibration of separation to be fed by others. No more. Unless you want to go somewhere else and get it. Of course, because that's a choice, because you're God. And it's not wrong, because you're God. And there's no judgment. It's your journey, your story. You don't have to be responsible for it. Because you didn't do anything wrong to be responsible. You're not doing it wrong or right. You're doing it now to the best self of an evolutionary idea called David, who had the balls to join into a separated idea with the brethren that she honors every day. That's what you did. So why are you kicking yourself in the ass because of something that you perceive is not right for you as an egoic structure to become that? Be what you are now. The comfort, the discomfort. The love, the hate. The eccentric, the exotic, the sinful. Hmm? The atrocity. Be the lover, be the hater, be everything you want to be and understand yourself and that discernment tells you that's bullshit, that's not me any longer and then you'll never ever fight it because you've accepted yourself. You've taken back a piece of the billions of selves you shattered yourself into when you came here and you're just collecting the selves. You're going, I love you. Oh yeah, come back. I got you, baby. It's okay to love yourself, kid. 
It's okay. You got a lot to think on this Thank one. You. Ponder on it. Let it marinate. Feel it. And that's it. No thought. No thought. No thinking. Uh -uh. Don't rely on that self of the past. Leave it out. Say, oh, yeah, take a break. Right now, I'm just going to be in the isness of this. I'm marinating in my own love. Ah, perfect. And let the thoughts flow. Watch them. Watch how magical thoughts that are left alone return to love. All fears go back to love because that's what they are because you're not being fed the vibration of validation by the conscious self that creates its reality of choice. Oh, God, we are so good. Mm, okay. Love you, baby. Thank you. You're welcome, David. Thank you, Sly. We have a question from Kina. What's up, Kina? <laughs> hey, Kina, I think I just saw you pop up here. Is your microphone working? Kina. Mute David back. Or David, mute yourself. Oh, yeah, there we Hi. go. Kina, um, if your microphone is having issues, you can type your question in the side chat. I'm happy to ask it for you. I'm unable to hear you. So. Blow my nose. Hang on. <laughs> Take your time. My well, Roxy's nose. All right. Kina, um, yeah, please just uh, type your question or um, let me know later if you're able to get your microphone working. Uh, is there something out there on YouTube? <clears throat> Um, actually, we have a question from Bianca first, and then we have some YouTube questions. Bianca, are you able to unmute? Yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Thank you. Um, hi, Roxy. I have this thought that... Bianca, Zyme what's up, baby? Hang on. What's I up? want to say hi. Don't jump right into the fucking shit. Hi, baby. <laughs> hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. good to see I'm you so again. happy to hear you. Yeah, yeah, good <laughs> vibrations. Good connection yes. in the now. What's up, baby? What do you got? <laughs> awesome. Um, I have this thought that blindly following my heart is something my mind can't comprehend, so I don't even need to try to understand my actions on yes. my impulses. Yes. Trust oh, okay. your impulses because they lead to a truth, okay? Remember, remember, yeah. remember, 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 okay? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Ready? Points of existence, yes. okay? I'm going to talk about point A and point B. You got A here, I don't know if you can see it, and B here. This is self A that wants to choose, choose a joy, a reckless, blind, I trust my heart joy, okay? Got that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's point A. Point A either chooses B or B. There's two Bs, okay? B1 is not to choose your joy. B2 is to choose your joy. But either way, you get to reflect on self A. Not regretfully, in evolution. Everyone looks at the bad side. Oh, you made a mistake. The fuck you did? I shouldn't have done that. Yes, you did, because without that self, you can't see the self of evolution. You don't have the ability to look back at a choice. Even if you say, oh, I don't want to do that. God, I should have done that. Why don't I do that? I'm afraid to do that. That's a self of reflection. This is the new self. Now, but without that, you don't know your truth, right? Yes. Bianca? So if you want to choose a reckless idea, a haphazard idea, it doesn't make any sense. It's going to be a waste of time, but it's my freaking heart saying, I want to do this, then choose it. And then all of a sudden you're going, wow, I don't want to, didn't want to choose that. Well, then rejoice because now you've shed yourself of identity that you know no longer serves you. Start looking at what's good about life, guys, instead of going back to the diplomacies of negativity, of what you've been spoon-fed all your life. Oh, you made a mistake. You need to make it up for it. Oh, you did this wrong. The fuck you did. You didn't do shit wrong, ever. You never made a mistake. You've always had an opportunity to see yourself in your own understanding of yourself and shed an identity so you can become the wholeness and the isness of what you are. God, that's what you get, Bianca. So yeah, be blind. Be vulnerable. Blind is the idea that you're blinded to your own belief systems of limitations. Sure, you can do that. But what you can do 
is look at yourself in the vulnerability to trust what? My world, my universe. The only thing that's flowing into me is unconditional love. Do you think we defend ourselves against what? Ourselves? That's right. You got that, Bianca. Take a chance to see. And whatever that now new self is, is a new self of understanding itself. How do you not rejoice about that? Make sense, baby? Yes, it does. You, Thank you got it. Just keep freaking rocking it, Bianca. Don't <laughs> worry about it. And when you know you find a self of identity, love it, allow it, be it, kiss it, and keep rocking and go about it. And the next time you know you're not going to choose that self because you've accepted that self as no longer being an identity that needs to feed because I need admiration. I need to belong. I need people to know that I'm alive. I am falling in love with myself and I need nothing in my universe because my universe is mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I love you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Kina, it, couldn't you try again? I know you're saying your microphone was working. Let's try to fit you back in here. Is your microphone fixed? Hmm. Hmm. Not hearing anything. Kina, please um, type your she's question. I'll be happy to ask it for yeah, you. She's not muted, right? Hmm. Yeah. Things that make you go. Hmm. Things yeah. that make you go. All right. Well, um, next up, we have a question from Tracy Hunter from YouTube. Tracy Hi, asks, Tracy. She asks, when we asked for the negative side to assist us exploring, where does that stand now? Are we figuring out their role? There is no negative side until you choose a negative side to assist you in ascending. Don't think there's a standard out there for one second. It's your world, darling. You get to choose to see how the world is, what comes into it in definition. You're the one who takes every vibration and distorts it to the frequency level of understanding that you choose your life to be, your identity, your I am, your isness. That's who you are now. But there's no negative until you create negative. There's no polarity until you create polarity in the now by validating what you know. And you know only polarity. You know measurement. You know the scales of humanity all day, reinforced every single day. But now you're accepting those ideas and no longer validating the polarity. And then you will no longer be that in your life. You'll still see. Here's, here's the gift. You'll see, you'll see the same scene from the two different points of view of yourself. One views it as atrocity. And the other viewed it as perfect love. And you're still the same human. But you're just changing your view of it. So that idea that you're reaching for, that negative helps or hinders or chooses or not, that's all up to you, baby. How about this? Don't even use negative. Just be now. Don't choose negativity anymore because no, nothing is negative until you say it is. And you guys know negativity because you gave yourself negativity through the evolution of this. Because you scaled from fear. You're birthed in fear, negative, to become positive. And the idea is that you're already positive to release all the negativity to re just realize that. That's all, baby. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Sly. You're welcome. Uh, we have a question from Dora on YouTube. Dora uh, Z. Oh, boy. Uh, Dora. I, I, I know Dora. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, hi, Dora. <laughs> Why don't you um, just email Roxy, you big silly? Go ahead. I'm kidding. She wants to play. Yeah, she wants to be a part of the live interaction. Yeah. <laughs> so she asks, I would like to ask about the history of Earth with the fall of Atlantis and Earth moving to lower dimension. What no, was it no, that no, actually no, happened? No, 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 no lower dimensions. No. Lower, higher, validating door, some start point or end point. It's just now. Okay? Let me tell you something. Earth has been through five ascensions. Don't think you're the only species that ascended off of Gaia. And it's been in a third density, but it's not lower or higher. That's what you guys can only measure. That's an old point of view of one, two, three, four, five, because that's the way you can perceive life, creation. But it's really not. It's just here and now. Third density is here and now. Fourth density is here and now. But we don't put the numbers. You do. So Earth is the idea of, let's say, an evolutionary planet hosting evolutionary species. 
She's evolving, understanding herself through the expansion, but she doesn't have the idea of I'm evolving. She's just now. You put evolving on it. So evolving is a built in. We can't help not to evolve. We're always now more than what we are now and more than what we are now and more than what we are now and now and now we're, oh man, we're just always more. Okay, so you don't need to pay attention to it. So of the Atlantean ideas, there's, there, there, there's like five, six different valid timeline collapsible Atlantis in your reality. It was just a game. One exploded, one drove on, one collapsed under the thumb of Ramtha that just wiped it off the fucking planet, and the Lemurians, and they kept on raging and took about 10 billion people and just killed them because Ramtha got pissed at the Atlanteans for killing mom. Oops. See, those were all games. That's all they are, sweetheart. They're just games of perspectives of humanity figuring itself out. But that Atlantean time you're looking for specifically is just one tiny little idea. You want to know about Atlantis, what do you want to know? It was an awesome place to live. They had trade. They had people. They had, uh, let's say, no monogamy. Kicks you guys. Yeah. They had many lovers. They had great food, they had spices, they had tapestries, they had silk, they had dyes, they had running water, they figured out hot water. They had a whole bunch of stuff. That's all the Atlanteans were, a civilization's rock in their world. It doesn't mean anything pinnacle, it's a point of view of a now. You have a self that's Atlantean, is the reason why you're connecting this, go to that self from that point of view that exists in the now, and you are now, so guess what, you have access to it. So from that point of view, Dora, be that idea and take a walk through Atlantis and know the world that you chose to already live in, in the now that you are now. But don't think this species, evolution, humans, oh, there's so many of us. There's so many timelines. There's so many species that have ascended from this species. Well, actually, five. You're the fifth, the last one. She's going on after this. Go ahead. Okay. Ooh, thank you. Um, uh, Jane, Jana, I believe it's pronounced Jana. Jana Kadri is asking, I understand that the relationship to self is the most important thing to maintain, but people often uh, seek... Okay, time out. Not maintain. It's your natural state of being. Maintenance is an idea of a job, effort. We have no effort. We are that. Maintenance is a concept of an identity trying to maintain the self-love. When it doesn't need to be maintained, it just needs to be released. Release the identities and self-love is built in. Okay, that was the first point of view. Keep going. Go ahead, Go ahead baby. Okay. Finish the question. Okay, so, um, but people often seek purpose in their lives through their relationships with other individuals, such as yes. friends or lovers or humanity yes. as a whole. Yes. So my question is, what is the foundation of our life purposes? There is Does no foundation. It's what every individual perceived a foundation to be, a life purpose, and it was bought into by different ideas through timelines leading to the now that you have. Those people that you say are having purposes are a reflection of you to accept them as they are, to let them be the purposeful, and know that you have no purpose because all nows are purposeful. They fill you every needle now with the fulfillment of vibration of experience in the now. That's purpose enough. You don't need a purpose because a purpose is a identity of separation. So understand this, darling. Don't worry about what people are doing. Focus on what you are. It's not important because that leaves something unimportant. Everything is relevant. Let's leave it at that. It's a buffet. You get to choose where you want to eat. That's all. Don't think you're missing something because you choose this to be important. No, that's your relevant now. This is my highest joy. I choose this and then this and then this. Don't worry. Creation never goes away. We never get offended. You're not missing anything. That's time. That's importance. That's measurement. So your purpose and where it birthed from is humanity trying to find its way home with an identification. Oh, I'm a healer. I'm supposed to be a healer here. Then I'm going to go out and be that purpose. And that fills them with the love that they're trying to seek and the admiration of others. And then when that dependency gets crushed and the business doesn't come and they don't know what it is, then they go and go, what's my purpose? Why the fuck am I here? You're here to find you, to love yourself, to become whole again. The experience of limitation. 
You're not here to be anything in a human construct. Roxy is finding herself by using the attributes of channeling, becoming an exceptional channeler. Now she's just now this idea. This brings her the joy, but she is not an identity of a channeler. Uh-uh. This is just what she is now, filling her heart with the bliss of this ideology. That's it. And she can shift and go here, 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 and you can go here, here, here. There's no careers. There's no outcome. There's no time. There's no retirement. There's the now, the now, the now of filling your heart with the purpose of your highest choice, and that will give you the eternal bliss that cannot be replaced with the missings of other ideologies of your mind. goes, oh, you should have done that. You should have done that. That kind of idea. That was really good. Go ahead, baby. Exceptional question. That was question. really good. We're almost done with the questions. So uh, she, she continues, does connecting to the self imply that we connect to humanity as a whole? And if possible... Well, let's say this. You are never not connected to humanity as a whole. You're never not connected to everything already. You fart over here, someone burps on the other side of the world. That's how connected you are. How about that? You just don't perceive it through the mind of consciousness that you're connected to humanity. How can you be disconnected? Everything is here and now. It's law two of the universe. If everything is here and now, how can you not be connected to the here and now? Everything is here and now. It's just your perceptions, your filters, your frequency range, your eternal radio that constantly shifts the frequency that accepts the framework in to be an experience or not. But you are literally that idea of already connected to the human collective. All right, keep going with the question. Wonderful. All right. Well, the last part of the question was just her asking um, if there are any small messages for her. Not small. Why does that have to be small? You're not looking – you're looking at yourself as an inconvenience. How about any message? How about this? Here's the message. Hi, I'm your higher self. I'm every thought you've ever had. I'm the one you talk to. I'm the one who goes, oh, I'm talking to me. Well, who's the me? Me, me. Me who? Me I am. That's who I am. So get to know me. Spend some time with me. Have a tea party with me. Sit down with me. Contemplate me. Yell at me. Scream at me. Argue with me. Just get to know me so you get to know yourself because I'm the way home. I am you. And message. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Kina, uh, finally, uh, she got her question typed here. So Kina okay. asks, um, when our essence creates the thought we receive. Excuse me, hold on. If it is, if it is coming, what is it? From guys or other being of fractals. Oh, it always comes from you, darling. You're the originator. Bashar said it best years ago. Years ago, I'll give it to you guys so you can have it, okay? You got three minds, okay? C. R, P. You have a conceiving mind, the C. That's the first nine. The originator, that's you whole. Whole. You're welcome, darling. Whole. Then those thoughts come down to your ideology in this fractal dream. Your physical brain, receiver. It's a really good TV set. It's a great translator. It receives. Incapable of original thought. Only can formulate experience of memory. Created in the now, by the way. And then here's the third mind. P. Perceiving. Those are your perceiving minds. So your guides are the guides that you create guides to be. Your guides are the guides that you create guides to be. You are the original thought. Received translation. Pictures, vibrations, thoughts, vibrations, all of it coming into your mind. You are the perceiver of that according to the filters that you translate life to be. So, Make sense, darling? How are you hearing? Yeah, barely. You need to speak up. Oh, okay. And now? La yeah, keep going. Now? Loud, though. Yes, good. Now that's good. okay? Yeah, perfect now. Gotcha. Okay, I created it. It's okay. Yes, you uh, did. And it is okay. 
um, thank you for coming. Thank you for everyone to be here. It's very great. Uh, thank you for coming. Without you, there's no me. Get it? Yes. Every now is uh, perfect. It never had that. Wait a minute. You don't need to worry about giving thanks to people. I know this really kicks a lot of people in the ass, but it's as if I'm not getting something from your presence. I'm filling my heart because you showed up. Know that you're that awesome. Keep going. Yes, uh, when you when uh, we uh, receive when we receive uh, our fi uh, filters, all uh, we uh, the, our filters, it's in yes. the perceive perceiver mind. That's the, the perceiving mind. Yes, those uh, are your filters. Those mind? are those are your per perceiving mind. That's your mother and father's belief systems that you bought into. That may be true now or maybe not. That's your social acceptance, your schoolings, your teachers, your social cultural beliefs. One culture says this is acceptable. One says that's an atrocity. Okay? Those are all filters of the perceiving mind according to what you okay. coveted as an evolution. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. And uh, when we shift our frequency, it will not, uh, change. Not, not. Not shift your frequency. Don't think you need to shift your frequency. Here's how you exist. A vibration that's called unconditional love. Perfect, undistorted bliss. That's what you are all the time. You don't shift your frequency. You choose to change your view of love, which is giving you a different distortion of love. But that's you choosing not to shift your frequency to get better. It's what you are naturally choosing to give yourself a frequency shift of being separated. So it's to reverse it. You're not choosing to be more ascension-like. You're choosing to be less separated. And the natural flow of yourself comes in as your natural frequency. So reverse that ideology. So now let's put it like this. You want to be more connected then be less disconnected by accepting all of yourselves of separation, identities, perceptions of separations. Does it matter that you're white, black, yellow, purple, green? Mm? Does it matter what country mm, you live in? Are you more better than other people? Just because you're from Sweden, does that make you better than people that are not from Sweden or America or Canada? If you have those identities, that's your separation. That's your perception that I need to hold on to this separated self because if not, I don't belong. I'm scared. I don't understand. I'm uncomfortable. That's your perceiving idea. That's who you are. That's the vibration that you choose to be your love for yourself in the now. It's all still love, but don't scale it on a measurement, lower frequency, higher frequency. Then you got to fucking deal with that. Just be the now, accept all that is, and you will release yourself from all the paradigms of distractions in this new now. Guys, you're evolving naturally. So, of course, you're going to get yourself more shit. This is the more shit you've been waiting for. A new way of perceiving reality to find a new truth in you so you can keep rocking your world and get out of the set stage you've been playing with for the last couple of years. Let's keep moving on. That kind of idea. Does that make sense, sweetie? Yes, thank you. And uh, your your ego died uh, only once a uh, time, or or you have to regress. No, no, no. it's not. It's it's not in one particular ego. It's every identifiable belief system. Every single one that you accept is quote dying. You can call it a death. You sure? You die to your mm -hmm. old selves all the time because you don't longer validate them. They're in that back now. Think about when you were little. You used to get so upset about something. Now you're like you don't give a shit. Because you have no identity about that. That self is dead. But it's not one big ego. It's all the aspects of filters that you believe is, let's say, sustaining an identity of separation. Yes. So it's all about uh, choosing our worthiness. Yes. Your love, your worthiness. Absolutely. Choose what you're worth. Tell people no. Tell people to fuck off. They're bugging you. Don't be afraid to be a human at the same time choosing your joy. I don't want that. Bye bye Find yourself. Give yourself your true self to know yourself. Discover yourself. Be yourself because you're God. Every time you try to be obligated, responsible, within the boundaries of limitations, you're fucked. Choose your heart. Thank you so much. You're welcome, baby.
Thank you. Uh, Sheer has a question next. Sheer, my goodness, where you been, baby? The How are things I've, over there? I've been in Israel. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, I'm rocking. How can it's I know? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Well, it's actually just been now. Yeah. Yeah. But in linear perspective. It's been time if you want to validate that, but we're still here now. I didn't miss anything and neither did you. Ah! <laughs> nice. Well, what's up, baby? The, first of all, you said something about Atlantean and you mentioned a, ma uh, a name that tinkled my spider senses. Ramtha. Rampadaga. Something. Ramtha. Yeah, who, who was it? Ramtha was a god, an ascended god. A god that ascended through anger, hated to find his love. It was a beautiful ascension. It's she's Ramtha's channeled by Jay Z Knight. You guys know Jay Z Knight, no. maybe not so much anymore, but look up Jay Z Knight on the idea of YouTube anywhere. She has the Ramtha School of Ascension. So great being, epic being, and Ramtha obliterated obliterated Atlantis, just killed them all. <laughs> and why that tingled with you? Why do you think? I don't know. You just said it, and I was like, oh, what the fuck? And I just... Okay, but okay, so yeah, I know you don't know, but now let's go ahead and play the game of intuition instead of the game of logic. Now trust yourself and tell yourself the truth. Why did that connect with you? It was like... Holy shit! Oh my god! That's like a now! Why? Yeah. Why? Figure it out. Feel it. I gotta well, go pee. Hang what on. you said about him, I, I feel like I have some connections with him. I don't know if... Yes, keep going. He Trust me. Exactly. Say that again? I don't know. I don't know if I'm him exactly, but... No, I'm you're not him, just, No, you... Hmm? You were close to Ramtha, though. In what sense? Why don't you figure it out instead of using the crutch of reflection? When do you get to be trust? Go ahead, share. It's time to trust. Don't worry about being wrong. Swallow your pride. No one's here judging you, only you. You live in a fucking bubble. So what do you think you were? And I will give you the details, and we will find new truths together, because we are evolutionary. We are love. Go ahead. Okay. So let's go over the details. So, what were you with Ramtha? I already gave you, you were close, and you want to know what in capacity. No. Which one? You tell me. He sounds like me. What were you in relationship to Ramtha is your question. I feel like a brother to him over him. I would say a brother would be tangible in your vibration connection, but it's not an actual blood brother, no. They killed his family. The Atlanteans mm. killed his family. He was really pissed. Oh, so it was me. I mean, if he was pissed... You're not Ramtha. Mm. You're... Was, you were by his side. Uh -huh. Got what? it now? I... <laughs> Well, fuck, kid. Do I want to give you the whole story? When do you get to start trusting your intuition mind? No, not his wife. Not his girlfriend. <clears throat> Come on, guys. See it. Not his boyfriend. LOL. Blue. Feel it. Not just a friend. More than a friend. Feel it, guys. There's a capacity. A feeling. A vibration of a definition. Alliance, closer blue. Anybody. Trust yourselves. Not mother, sister. Mother died, sister died. He was by himself. Entire idea. His brother. Not a brother. His brother died. His whole family died. I feel like it's a sense of comrade. Like they fought side by Better? side. They what? They fought like side by side. Bingo! Um, Yesterday. Yeah. Yes. You. you were his captain. 
Cool. And all you had to do is trust it. Because Captain came up in your mind. I don't know what came in my mind, but I just heard the name and I was like, what? I know, but now you're getting used to trusting what's inside. Okay? Yeah. See, when you go, what? Don't deny. Okay, if you guys are going to stay in honest of yourself that you're actually connected to all of fucking creation, then when you get to become creation, when you die again and again and again and again and again until you say, okay, I'm going to accept that I'm God. I'm going to accept that I'm awesome. Yes, Blue, Brian did say pet. Pet, huh, Brian? No <laughs> problem. Me and my brigade are coming your way. No, just kidding. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, next question is, I'm trying to figure out like what I want to study or do. That's a big mistake. Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure out. It's not a mistake. It's a choice. But we'll say for you, it's a mistake. Why are you trying to figure anything out? I can't. Like Right. Perfect. You can't. So accept you can't figure it out and start acting on whatever you want to do in the moment and then you will find your joy. This is exactly what I'm doing, but I don't right, find it. Wait, okay. are you still okay here now? So you're yeah. rushing it. You're still expecting creation to show up. Uh-uh. You need to find what natural timing is. You need to trust the algorithm of natural timing brought forth by the greatest, one of the greatest speakers that your planet has experienced, Seth. Natural timing. Don't force it. Don't force it. Don't force it. You, you relax. You still got food? Are you still fine? Are people beating you up saying you're not doing anything? You're not serving a purpose? You're not being part of society? Tell them the fuck off. I'm being me now. There's no laziness until you perceive laziness. There's no career until you create a career out of an algorithm called an identity so you can feel like you have a purpose. Hmm. Sure, you're good enough as an if. See, the difference between enough and more remains a chasm forever. Because once you're enough, you'll never want to be more. But once you're more, you'll never be enough. So take the point of view that you're enough now and let the creation, your higher self, show you things that you can fill your heart with the diplomacy of purpose without being purposeful of identity and you will find this world to be everlasting, freaking beautiful, epic, joyous. Awesome. Unimaginable. So get out of your way. Stop trying. You're not smart enough to figure it out. Yeah. No, I, f I feel what you're saying. Like, uh, I can't really... Let me ask you a question. Has it worked so far? Yeah. You've been trying all your life. How are you doing with it? <laughs> Actually, a lot of time I'm not trying. Like, there are certain things that I'm like, dude, I'm not going to do that. And then it's get done by mysterious ways. Not mysterious? What the what are you talking about, mysterious Sheer? There's no mysterious. It's you in your world that's a god. I'm a mysterious god. You create god. the holodeck, but you say it's mysterious. That's an outside, oh, it's mysterious, some unknown force. Are you fucking kidding me, Sheer? How long are you going to play with the denial that you're that awesome? How long are you going to keep not accepting your godship? You need to accept it's not mysterious. It's my holodeck. I plug it in. I program it. And I create the light vibrations around me to give me the illusion of an experience called a human. I did that. That's what you need to start doing. You need to start accepting that you're awesome. It's not some mysterious force that lies over there. Ooh, look at that. Fuck that. It's your world. Yes. Yeah, we are being it's not necessarily. Being hang on. Being hang on. Hang on. Time out. Time out. Christina. It's not necessarily brainwashed. No one. Brainwash is an idea from a standpoint of victimization. What it is is you coveted a belief that you didn't know that you could think outside for yourself. Make a choice for yourself. That's all it is. Yes. And being humble is a real kick in the ass for a lot of people. Because that humble is I can't accept the awesomeness that I am. You got to be selfish at points in the now in your universe to accept your awesomeness. All right. Sure. Go ahead. Hmm. Yeah, I'm fucking awesome. I'm a god. Yes, I do like the word mysterious, but fine. I okay, walk be in mysterious. A, I'm mysterious ways. <laughs> I'm just then messing. You, then, well, you can mess with you. Just <laughs> you will not know yourself. 
start to accept that I'm a badass. I'm a God that chose this incarnation. And when I accept my world as the beauty that I'm giving to me, and I take it freely, I take it unconditionally, then I will know my Godship. Amen. Booyah. Yeah. Yeah. Then hey, one last we... thing. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, do I have any messages or anything that... Yeah, whatever's popping in your mind. We went over the three minds. Start to trust the original thought and start to talk to yourself. You, you, Sheer, the God. Get to know in a relationship with reality. Once again, we'll remember our Seth. Everything is relatable to reality. It's how you relate to money that keeps money out of your life or in your life. Abundance out of your life or in your life. Do you deserve it? Are you separate? Are you trying for it? Do you think it only comes in? It's how you relate to all vibrations of reality that create your acceptable framework. So you get to know you, you start becoming familiar with the relationship within your mind, that you start to talk to yourself and you're having conversations with all of a sudden yourself and many other selves all the time, like, holy shit, hey, 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 hey. And then all of a sudden you're never alone and you love it because you're always feeling connected and you're having that relationship to the unknown. That's the way to be. And then you'll have all the messages you ever need. Okay, thank you. Much, you're welcome, baby. Fun. Thank you. All right. Uh, Who is that, Christ Christine. Is that Christina? Christine, yeah, I want to talk to her. Come online. Yeah, she has a question. I know. Where are those birds at? <laughs> Christine, I saw you earlier. Where'd she go? Maybe she stepped away for a second. She goes, am I next? Yes, please, Christine, go ahead. She's I'm unmuted. Sorry, it was taking a there while to. That's okay. Unmute. Can you hear me now? Sure. Can. Yeah, we got you, baby. Okay. Oh, she kind of left. Yeah, she went back to being muted. I don't know how okay. that happened. Maybe um, she had muted. Try to tell. Let's see here. Okay, now we can hear. Oh, uh, one second. If. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I work on a horse rescue site, and my charges are two donkeys. And um, I have this fear of picking up hooves and cleaning them. And the donkeys, <laughs> I got to train them. Uh, people pick up their hooves so they could get them fixed. Uh, uh, taken care of by the farrier. So in, in my mind, I am picturing me overcoming my fear and um, picking up their hooves, cleaning yes. them, and so on, sensitizing them. Now, is this going to work? <laughs> of course. <laughs> the of donkey course. Here? Yes. Okay. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to become the standpoint of I don't give a shit what happens. Because that's oh, oh, but I like, do. Oh, oh, but the, then you then you then you are that separation. Do you get it? Okay. Yeah. When I you do. are vulnerable, the only thing that comes in is a connection with the donkey, and the donkey goes, "Oh, you're awesome. Hi, what's up? You don't have defenses. You don't stink of fear. That's how animals know that you guys are fearful because you literally stink of it. You have a vibrational co-creation with the animal kingdom that you put on the pheromones of fear." Okay, so you have to accept that I'm going to get kicked or whatever your fear is like, yes, this is going to be awesome. And you walk in there and you feel the now and you be that and you live life and you'll see that no fears come true. That experience is bliss. That theory is a dirty diaper left for the th idea of the therapists. <laughs> oh, Thanks, boy. Baby. In your now. Don't force it. You'll know the time. You've accepted it. That's this now. Everything on the path is done. Let it go in the past. Now you've accepted it. Now the reality of that probable reality of you playing out the fear will come into play in natural time and don't fuck it up. Don't try to make it faster. Leave it alone. It'll know. It'll like, okay, this is your time. And you're like, okay, shit, here it comes. Yay. And then go have fun. <laughs> okay. You good? 
I'll let you I'll let you know when that time comes if they do if they do kick me. They won't. <laughs> and except if they do. See, that's the game they of like to. Yeah, they like to tease me because they know I have that fear. So um, they'll move their bodies around and bump me and knock me into the snow. And I mean, <laughs> I'm amused by their playing, but um, I still have that fear. <laughs> so change your, change your relationship with them. Relationship uh -huh. to reality, which is a relationship to yourself. Accept all fears right. that you divide against yourself, reality is, and then you'll uh -huh. start to feel the relationship between you and the donkey shift. Make sense? Okay. All right, baby. Awesome blossom. Okay. Thank you, Roxy. You're welcome, darling. We good? Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we have a question from L. Finally, my time has come. Hello, everyone. Roxy, Hi, Al. How are you, baby? You. I'm good. I'm fighting with life and dancing with life, singing with life, doing everything I can in order to feel alive. <laughs> I just wanted to say I love you. Thank you for everything, for this co-creation. Uh, for me, you. personally, I, I found myself being, um, how you call it, um, awakened channeler. When I channel, I'm me. I'm not uh, forgetting or being staying aside. I always like to to be uh, with in a good interaction with my channeling. Perfect. Yes, but um, what I don't right. find is time because I have the baby and and the husband and you know everything else that goes in with the package. <laughs> okay, but see, here's the gift. See, time is created in the moment of the now. But since you say you don't have time, the mirror is perfect and it gives you reasons not to have time. Yeah. Let go of time, know it's going to come, and do it in the now that you know you have time. But you are validating time of something responsible that you need to do that's not now, but it's coming mm -hmm. in the future. But you All don't know what's coming, but you create what's coming because you don't validate yourself in the now. You validate yourself in time, so therefore your life is timeful. Yes. One big, beautiful cage. Okay. Well, kisses from me. Make sense? Yeah. That's it. Simple. That's it. I know. It's coming. <laughs> you got it. You got the shit. Good job. Good job. Love you. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, we have a question from YouTube live chat. Username is Tracy is me. She says, what's the difference between guides and higher self? Why do we have both? You gave yourself guys as a construct because you couldn't accept your higher self as an authority. Okay. Imagine if you will, your whole individual singularity, you're all that is. Okay. So that's the higher self, the whole self. We used higher self because that was a construct of human evolution and acceptance. Okay, that was the first idea. But you're truly a whole self. So now just call yourself a whole self. The difference is guides is angels. That's what they are. Hmm? Animals, spirit guides, reflections, grandmothers, dogs, cats. Anything that you can perceive can guide you because you couldn't guide yourself. So you gave yourself guides, you gave yourself angels, you gave yourself ways to connect to yourself, but they're all truly aspects of you guys. There are archangels, of course. They've been there for you because you called them in. See, everything outside of your world that you create for you in your world is called the steward of creation. It never says no. It says exactly what you want it to be. So the guides was a permission slip for humanity to accept to use guides because the self was unworthy of being smart enough and to handle the problem. So you put them all up there. You gave them to the guides. You gave them to the guides for guidance. But now the guidance is you. The guidance is you. You're the God here. And now this is the new evolution. See, this is the difference. This now from the standpoint of, let's say, your harmonic convergence and waking up is the difference between going from an angry God to a Christ conscience. 
That's the difference. You went from one God to allowing yourself to be in God through the Christ conscience. Now you're leaving the Christ conscience as above, as below, connected through the silver cord idea of the Pisces, huh? Asia Pisces. You're leaving that construct to now I am God. Right now. Choose it. You're the guide. You've always been it. You're the creator of your reality. You've been giving yourself a hell of a fucking show since you got here. Start to embrace what you are. And understand and trust and let go and release. And you will find all of the selves that separate you from the whole. And I want you to love them. I want you to hate them. I want you to feel them. I want you to harbor them. I want you to do anything that the now says to do is your truth. And you will shed all of those separated selves. All those probable selves will crumble away. And you'll be left with the guy that you've always been. The I am that you are. Booyah. Booyah. Thank you. A uh, question from Tracy Hunter from YouTube. Tracy asks, Sly, can you elaborate on the connection with our other selves, how our experiences affect their, affect them if you, or us? Yeah, if you have awareness, your other selves are very aware, the ones that are not disconnected, of you, okay? Let's not, let's not take the other selves of probable selves of the human. Leave that out. Just take the human that you are right now. Okay, we'll answer from this standpoint, okay? So the human that you are right now has other selves, an Arcturian self, a Pleiadian self, an Andromedan self, an Iona self, an Itona self, another idea construct that you can't even fathom, a reptilian, maybe a Drachmonian or something like that. All of these selves are aware of you. Because you guys are the ones playing the disconnected game. Even the new humans, the Venusians of the futures, are not that disconnected the way you are disconnected. Different idea game. Okay? So those selves are aware of you. They don't, let's say, have an effect on you until you are aware of them in the knowing of them, not the fear of them, not the guess or the identity of that, because that's still a separated self and you're not connecting to them because you're only separating from the connection of that. In other words, people want to be a Pleiadian self more than want to be the human, okay? But if you don't know yourself in connection, you don't know that Pleiadian. You're just playing a game of illusion with yourself of separation, fathoming off the ideology of the past to create the image that you think you're connected to your Pleiadian self, that kind of idea. But you are now, if you choose to be, and trust the intuition thought and take it out with no identity of what's supposed to be thinking to be connected to that self, and that self will speak truths to you that you cannot fathom out of the construct of your memory, of your mind, of the identity, of the library of limitation, we call it, you've created for yourself as knowledge, as how you should think from the standpoint, okay, that kind of idea. Now that's gone, and now you can be connected to any of the selves that you are. They're right here, roadmap to creation. So those selves aren't affected by you. They observe you and watch and choose from the joy, just like you're choosing me. I'm a self of yours if you want to say that because we're not disconnected. I'm still a perspective of you. So I'm giving you an offering to choose an ideology about you as the Pleiadian self is looking at the human self that you are going, fuck, that's awesome. I'm going to understand that vibration and choose it within my reality, interpret it, and make it in my own little flower, my own little beauty, my own little creation, my own little fragrance, that kind of idea. We're always constantly the steward to creation to each other to choose the vibrations and create a reality for us forever. Experience. Beautiful. So it's not how we affect them or they affect us. That's a human construct of they're doing this and they're doing that. No, they're in there now focused. When they have an awareness of you, that's a particular now. It's not permanent in time. It's not time at all, truly. And you are not affecting them and you can let them affect you as the ideology of separation to become whole and then you become a symbiotic relationship with yourself just like Roxy hangs out with her wizard self all the time. That kind of idea. And she has no disconnection with the wizardry that she is. Sweet. That's it. Thank you. Awesome. All right. We got a last question here, and then we'll have to wrap up. Okay. Um, so Night Howla from YouTube Live was asking, I hear someone is waking up the ancient builder race, like giants in the Bible, uh, Nephilim, I believe. Um, he said David Wilcock has talked about them. Yeah. 
David Wilcox is on a world that creates a reality of his joy. Here's what you do. Choose it or don't. Follow your heart. There's no waking up a big ancient on my earth. You want to play that earth of a big ancient walking around on an earth? Then you get to do that earth. If it's palatable within the collective whole to actually perceive that. See, an event doesn't happen until enough created to be that. The one or many doesn't matter but it has to be done through a no filter will of creation to perceive that reality so absolutely someone could be waking up a whole bunch of giants but not on my earth not in Roxy's world you get to choose the earth the earth of drama distractions the ideology of some kind of identity to keep the bucks flowing in or to keep the identity out there look at me I know and you don't or I do know I trust and that's my world or it's not so it's not up to me to tell you the answer because I know my answer. Ain't no giants coming back to earth. We don't have time for giants. We played that game. We're not going to do that ancient world shit. What we're doing is evolving into the unknown species that we are. We're taking our worlds. We have a 3D earth that's going to a 4D earth. There are separating earths. I'm going to an earth that's not even on the scale of a separating earth or a 4D earth. I'm creating a world through Roxy and the idea that has nothing to do with anything of ascension, of gain, of judgment, of measurement, of futures. No. The Yael are going to come. The Essasani are going to come. The alien species are going to have their first contact. That's all going to happen. But why do I need to focus on that and make sure that happens when I know it's going to happen? Because right now, I'm now. And if I'm now, I create worlds that are beyond the worlds of the perceived precept of the people speaking the ideology from a standpoint of ego, of separation, because they need to be fed. That's my point of view. That was good. I know, right? Right, Rox? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um Okay, so he, the last part of his question, he said, uh, oh, well, supposedly the entity I'm thinking of, I guess he means the giants, is going to wake up, or excuse me, the entity I'm thinking of is going to wake them up and to do some negative stuff, like get That's rid of world. me. That's your world, exactly. That's your world. Welcome to your choice. There's no negative unless you want to validate that, but that's the only way you can get fed. That's what gives you life. That's you cutting yourself so you can see yourself bleed, going, wow, I'm alive. So I, instead of cutting yourself, you're just giving yourself fear. This entity is going to come and get me because I'm a big piece of shit. That's a victimization. Welcome to your waking up. This is awesome moment for you. Now you get to choose. David Wilcox had diarrhea of the mouth in that moment. Awesome. He's speaking his joy. We love him for his ideology. Perfect. Now he gives me a choice. To either believe that or not. It's the same thing as Trump. Trump is serving the shit out of humanity. They're like, God, we don't want this anymore. So you just not that you get rid of it. You just don't choose it. And you create your world. You drag that shit into your world, you become that world. You leave that world over there. That world never comes back again. You'll never view it the same way. So those ideas that you're fearing are your recognition of the separation self that you have to fear your world that is made unconditionally of unconditional love. So now your standpoint is now seeing that you are creating the fear because you accepted an ideology of someone that had more authority than you because you forgot your worthiness to choose your own discernment in your heart and follow that and say, ah, uh, Trump, uh, David, uh, bullshit. Ding, 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 bye. And then you go on in your now, your world. Because no giant's here now. He's not fucking you up right now, kid. Huh? He's not there now. Otherwise, you couldn't be fucking watching on YouTube. So get over yourself of time and get over your victimization because that gives you identity. That identity gives you life. And now you need to swallow that pride and say, you're right. I want to be filled alive by having drama. I didn't even see that until just this now. And then this now, I can choose an emptiness, an isness, an uncomfortable self that I'm not familiar with, but I have the balls to do it. I have the gumption. I have the throstles to stick it out and be a self that I don't know because I've always been playing in the known, and I'm real good at playing with the known limitations. But now I shall choose the unknown. But again, I don't care. I don't give a flying fuck. You know why? Because I know what you are. You're God, you're forever, your existence, you're me. I don't fear anything. And I sure as hell don't feel your outcome because you're God forever. Cool. That's it. That's it. Great. Okay, thank you. Uh, one last question we can squeeze in here. Um, sure. Liliana was asking, 
how many people in the collective will we need to perceive one reality? I mean, one Earth. Oh, there is never one Earth, darling. There can never be one Earth. Because there will still be, even when there's, there's a 40 Earth, you know, like an Ascension Earth that you guys see in your future, there's still going to be a 3D Earth going on in the now, but not in the perspective of your now. See, there's still 3D Earths playing out. There's still humans that wanted a, a world war, uh, uh, let's say, what do you call a nuclear war? And there is that world. That world is still playing out. Don't worry about when it's going to end. It's when one person, last person, no longer chooses to focus on that earth, and that earth is no longer in the now. It's in another now, but it's no longer in the now, what you guys call the here and now of continuation, of sequential, taneous, let's say, creation. So there's not going to be one earth. There's going to be your earth. And the ones that are vibration co-creation in that are, are the people that are on your earth, like this earth right now. But there are going to be people that drop off from your earth. Some you won't even remember. Some you're like, whatever happened to such and such? That's it. Don't worry about them because they're gods. And they go forever. That's it. Make sense? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Amen. Awesome. Bye -bye. Thank you so much, Sly. You have rocked it like usual. We're so happy to have had you join us again. Thank you. It was awesome, wasn't it? Yes, indeed. It's always awesome. It's an unknown. Do what you will with it. Play with it. Fuck it up. Yell at it. Scream at it. Shit on it. I don't care because it's an offering, and my love is unconditional. So if I put a condition on it, then I'm a big fucking conditioner. Make sense? Do what you will. Freedom. Find it. All right, I'm going to get out of here and bring Roxy back. I love you guys. Love you. Thank you. Hi, guys. Excellent. Hey, Roxy. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. You're on fire like always. Oh. Love it. 110 miles an hour. Got to be now. Loving it. <laughs> For real. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching today. It's been a pleasure, as always. Um, like I said, please check out our website to keep up to date on our events, humancolony.org, and support people like Roxy. These lightworkers are doing this stuff, getting the stuff out there. You know, um, Do all that you can to support, because that's how we keep building. Uh, any last things you want to say, Roxy, before we close out for today? Yes. Don't be afraid to donate, guys. It's okay to donate. It sure is. It's okay. The reason why is you guys have no lack. And when you experience yourself donating in an idea of a lack and you see that the money never runs out, then you'll donate. And then you'll never have to donate again because it won't be a donation. It'll be a moment of bliss. It'll be so different. I learned that. It was fucking beautiful to feel that. I donated, you know, to know that I never ran out of money. I just don't know why I'm like got this, but this was just like big. So human colonies has a donation, donate to them. Even if it's five bucks. See, I remember when someone donated to me for five dollars and they were embarrassed, but they wanted to do it. And I was like, what the fuck? You can't be embarrassed on the amount. I'm not expecting. If I'm expecting, then I'm a dick. I'm a dick for expecting you to donate a certain amount. You find your heart to donate. And if you don't, it's not your truth, then don't. But what I want you to do is experience the dependencies with abundance because that's a big ass kicker for humanity. You be the idea of what you feel in the now. Hmm? Choose what you want to do. Fear nothing. If it says donate $5, donate $5. If it says don't donate, donate. If it says buy this, let's say, pair of shoes that you know you can't afford but you have the money in the now, buy them. Treat yourself like a queen. Give yourself a massage. Do that. Spend your money in the now and you'll find something out. That money is a light show. It's magic. For some reason, it just keeps coming in out of nowhere sometimes. Trust it. All right, guys. There you go. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. That was so beautifully put, and I, I want to second everything you said because it is very freeing to, uh, to, to live in the now, especially with finances. Just oh, yeah. exactly like you said. It's so beautiful. And I know you – you have an incredible story behind that, which loved your interview on uh, Extra Dimensionals, I think it was. Yeah, that was cool, wasn't it? That was yeah. so much fun. Um, 
I love love that stuff. You know, there's some really cool conversations coming out. So unlimit yourself, right? Yeah. That's what it's about. So awesome. Well, thank you, Roxy. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We love you. Get involved. Participate. Chat. Let us know what you're doing, what you're feeling. Um, that's what this is about. Yeah. So we'll close out for today, and everybody keep on rocking. Thanks again. Thank you, Brie, for hosting. Awesome. Love you. Thank you. Thank you, Roxy. You're welcome, all. We have been expecting you, Guardian. <laughs> you know. <All> right. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs>